What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beer's Garage. And this is another candy go-kart that we're gonna be doing a buggy build on. Uh, I know what you're thinking. We probably should finish some other stuff. Right. So in, in memory of all the other projects, we're gonna start a new project. So we teamed up with Small Engine Warehouse and we're gonna do a crazy big block V-twin build on this with a reverse gearbox. And we'll show you that stuff in just a minute. But this is a candy frame. We did the orange buggy a while back with the white wheels. Same frame as this. We built a custom roll cage on it. We'll be doing the same thing with this one. <clears throat> but the big difference is we put independent on that frame. This one already has it, which is kind of hard to find. This must be a later model. China always comes out with these with the basic swing arm where the engine moves up and down and everything. Then they'll upgrade it later. And luckily this one already has brakes on it. Uh, missing one brake. Uh, but it has these trail arms and we can build longer ones. We can cut these apart, use this as a um, jig, and we can build one that's about, I'd like to go like eight or 10 inches longer, which will give us more travel. So today we're gonna start this build. We're gonna unbolt the roll cage off. We're gonna cut this whole back cradle section because our V-twin's so big, I don't think it'll fit in this area because the diff's gonna be down low. The engine's gonna set right up above it, CBT driven, of course. The reason we're doing this instead of building a custom frame is we have a ton of these frames outside, like different 150, 250 frames. And we're trying to help you guys because a lot of you guys complain that you can't fabricate, like you don't have a bender and all this stuff, which you have to have a bender to do this, but we're not having to figure out steering geometry and stuff, which is gonna help you guys to do this in the future, in my opinion. So let's go look at the components we're gonna be using. We are gonna have to widen the front end to fit 26 inch wheels. Don't you look at that engine. This looks like a tarantula to me. I don't know why, that's what it reminds me of. One good thing is we kept the sprockets off of the other build that we just did with the independent trail and arms because we had to do the massive sprockets. Well, this one, we can reuse these small sprockets and that's because we're using this differential from Small Engine Warehouse. They do sell the front diff so you can do a four wheel drive setup, but we're not doing four wheel drive on this particular buggy. Uh, so this is their differential. This is off a Bush Hog side by side bush hog had a short lived side by side this is a super beefy differential use the cv axles on the rear the cvt input is right here it has reverse neutral high and low which is going to be awesome we'll have a low gear for crawling we'll have a high gear for high speed you know when you get in the straights and trails then it does have the output shaft for four wheel drive we don't need four wheel drive so you can actually take out these allens and it's got a sealed shaft that we can get rid of this for fitting it in the chassis. What do you want to say? You want to say something? I was, you know, you missed an opportunity. <laughs> you said uh, low gear for crawling. You could have said high gear for hauling. <laughs> oh yeah, low gear for crawling, high gear for hauling. I made that up just right now. <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> Come on, man. But uh, me out completely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people don't even know you exist. <laughs> but uh, we already figured out, uh, we have the part number to the CV axles, but we're not using CV axles. Since this is a 13 to one gearing ratio, way too low for 26 inch tires. We're gonna run shafts out of this with sprockets, run a chain drive up to a jack shaft that goes to the independent trail arms. Uh, so we'll get into all that when we build it. But the heart of the beast is this 35 horse Vanguard. This is a big block B twin. So basically it's like two almost 420s. It is two 420s put together. It's actually more than that. So that'd be an 840. This is a 996 CC. Does it say on the front? How many CC? 993. 993, baby. So we've got 1,000 CCs. <clears throat> and I know what people's gonna say. Why don't we use a motorcycle engine? We don't want to mess with gears because I want our buggies so my wife can get on it, my kids can get on it, anybody can ride it, and CVT is the best, in my opinion, for this stuff. We have a company already lined up that's going to do billet rods, cam, roller rockers, everything for this engine. We should be able to make some huge power and have more torque than most cross rocket engines have. That's why we're using this. So we're going to get to work on this. We've got to pull the cage off, cut a bunch of stuff out, and start seeing what we have to do to mount the diff first, then we'll work to the engine. So let's get right into it.
Jeepers, mister, you're really strong. So we opened up quite a bit of room right here, but again, that V-Twin's a hoss. I'm really hoping we can keep this because that'd be sick. Keep it just like this because this is a really good spot to mount the diff. So now we got to come up with what angle the diff is going to be on because one thing, we have to make sure the chain going from the diff to a jack shaft we're going to put at the bottom of the chassis isn't going to be an issue. Here's a tissue. All right, so in this tube here, has a bunch of brackets for stuff that we're not using. So instead of cutting every bracket and grind it, I'm just gonna have Lonnie cut this tube off here, this tube off here, and get rid of all this and we'll re-notch tube. It'd be way quicker because then we're only cleaning a couple weld spots and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> what a loser! What a piece of garbage. Oh man, that was hard to watch. Attached. Yeah, that's true. None of this down here is attached. So we're going to have to put this tube in soon to fix it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get that rubber mallet. So another problem we have is the side rails over there is very rusted. I don't like these floor pans at all. They're a bigger problem than they're worth, you know. When we can just weld tabs and have a removable aluminum floor pan and add some steel supports across, you know. cutting this is this is all pitted extremely bad it's the only tube on here that's this bad so we're thinking if we cut it right here sleeve it on the inside just cut out the straight piece here which gets rid of these tabs we don't need and junk we can cut it here cut it here and then he's cutting this weld along there so we can drop this tube out and we're replacing the floor pan with aluminum eighth inch thick aluminum because we like a removable floor pan for one it doesn't do stuff like this, this is where crap's set and there's no drains and stuff and uh, it's easier to powder coat. So we use the part of the roll cage that went from the front bumper up to the roll bar to patch this. This is only 14 gauge, which sucks, but we, we couldn't patch it with something thicker because it'd be pointless. So we sleeved it inside with a piece of gas pipe. Gas pipe will fit in this pretty good. We got us some rosette weld holes and we did the same thing up here. And then we clamped these. And if you didn't know on the end of vice grips, um, use a five mil Allen and you can crank them down and with a piece of angle the angle is gonna level these two out as long as you're using the same size tube. So now we have this level we've got a good gap that we can penetrate and get to that thicker steel that's on the inside so this will be stronger than it ever was stock and we don't have that crazy rusted piece. Okay, so it's just a 90 degree gearbox, which will be handy to keep for something. I don't know what, but something flew out of there. Don't know what it was. Shot out like a friggin' rocket though. So this spline piece was a coupler on this that went to the other piece. Wonder, wonder, I'm a little wondering head. Nope, maybe, no. 
I thought that'd be the same swan, same font. Nope. Okay, completely different. So that can stay with this. So if we ever wanted to use this four wheel drive, we could, but we're not, so don't ask me. So I had to remake this plate because I put the, the notch in the wrong place. But basically what will happen is we'll get some CV axles, um, hopefully find a set of bad ones because we're gonna disassemble them. And the cups will go right here. And at the end of the cups, we'll weld a sprocket flange that we can bolt on a sprocket uh, because I don't wanna weld the sprocket on because if we wear a sprocket out, I don't wanna have to buy new splines. But basically this is not the way they intended the diff to be stood up but it should work fine as long as we get the oil halfway in here and then halfway in here, like the level's correct. Should be all right. The vent will still work up here on the diff. This vents the pressure out and stuff, but should work good. This mechanism is gonna be hard to do because this is high, that's low, that's neutral, that's reverse. It's a, a what would that be, 90 degree swing? A 90 degree swing. So you can't have something just pulling because it has to go in a swoop. So we're gonna have to figure out how to make this bracket. I'm gonna also look how they did at factory. And then we'll also be able to have, try to hunt the factory cover or make a sheet metal cover that houses the pulley. We can have a fan on it. So the belt is 100% in the dry. That would be awesome. All right, so on camera, off camera, I made this hog just a 22 and a half degree notch. So we have a 45 and this is going to be our diff cradle. We went ahead and welded these stubs on, on the weld table. So they're super straight and everything. So when the other one falls in place, we can just TIG weld it around. Uh, we can't make it a unit because there'd be no way to get in it. Well, there would be, but we'd have a gap up there. You know what I mean? We could cut this lip off mm -hmm. and we could hook this back one and bring it up. But this- We don't want to do that. We don't want to. So what we're doing, put this in there, take this jammer, we'll square it of course, so now we have, where are you at? I'm right here. Uh, Rusty! <laughs> right, right here. here. <laughs> um, no, so that's now, not a good angle either. No, it isn't. Stand up, stick that. <laughs> oh, but uh, so now we can put the other one in and it's going to hold it the exact spread apart where we need it for the diff to set we left a little edge so we got a good fat meat area to weld mm -hmm. yeah you know what i'm saying so we just got to finish cleaning up the paint back here we can get this we're just gonna they're so tight we don't have to worry about falling off um or out uh so we can just set the diff and find out where it needs to be to clear the cvt pulley we don't have to worry about any kind of centering because off of this we're going forward and uh going to go to a jack shaft a jack shaft one and a quarter race car chrome ollie jack shaft so it's super strong it's a hollow axle uh we just got to get it dead in line with these bolts and get it compensated on the clunkets 
Then we'll weld some axle flanges to this, holding the axle up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then man. Uh, we just run do four axle bearings, I think. Maybe that's overkill on an inch and quarter. Might do three. Might put one in the center, two on the outside, and then there'll be stubs sticking past the bearing. That's where the sprockets go on to go to these hogs. This hog. Cool. Or cool. Yeesh. Cool. So, so we have the diff figured out in the chassis. We'll show you how we're going to do the jack shaft and everything. But one thing, I'm glad I saw this before welding this in. We had this ready to weld in. Basically, we was going to weld these plates in. We was going to put some cardboard spacers behind this so we had an air gap. But I forgot, has this lip that we made this ride on. So the problem with that is, if we weld these on, there'd be no way to get the diff off. So what I come up with is just this. We'll have this washer. This just basically gaps it so we can uh, drop the washer on this diff, slide it down in place once this is all done, and we can just line these holes up. It might be tedious, but you get a couple holes lined up, and boom, we have a spacer that so we can slide this in and out. So we're going to get this all installed. We're going to put some paper in between these two, some cardboard washers. Uh, just to make sure it's all good. We might laser cut some out paper. Okay, so diff's all tacked in place. We're going to box it in back here to make it stronger. And we're going to add a removable upper mount that utilizes uh, some of these upper holes that bolt to the frame just to keep because all the power of course goes into this differential then i've got to get the cv axles uh dave the guy that helps me out uh, like during semen stuff he has some cv axles some old worn out ones that the splines fit so i need those to make uh, sprocket flanges and we'll cut stuff off the frame like this then i'll run up to that one and a quarter axle you see up there the axle actually will not be mounted like that, but we're gonna weld a plate under here so these bearings sit down. You'll have a bearing that sits right in here on each side of pillow block bearing, and then on each axle stub, we'll have dual axles, one that runs to the diff and the one that runs to the sprocket on the trailing arm. So we'll have that on each side. We haven't cut this down fully to size. Then I'm gonna machine up or probably cut something up on the plasma table to put another support bearing out here that's unboltable. So if we wanted to remove this jack shaft, we would have to take a few bolts out, unbolt this little arm with a bearing support out here, and remove that. But I've got some stuff ordered. I had to order some one and a quarter bearings to make these supports out here. I've got my gearing all figured out for all my sprockets because we want to have a final drive ratio at the tire of an eight to one. Now this gearbox is 13 to one stock. So we talked with EC carburetors. They helped us uh, figure up the sprockets because of this gearing ratio and we know all of our sprockets. So we have to go get everything ordered and then we can get the chain set up and then we can start mounting the engine up here in the next video. What I'm thinking is next video engine will be mounted, jack shaft will be done. We'll start tensioning everything up and then we can test drive it. Um, very soon because before we build a row cage and everything we can take it for a quick rip with the stock engine in the stock configuration so make sure to check out the links in the video description for small engine warehouse you can find the four-wheel drive diff the front diff as well as the rear diff and this 35 horse briggs uh, on small engine warehouse links are down below uh, it does help us out if you use those links small engine warehouse has a ton of engines they have name brand kawasaki honda uh, briggs and Kohler they have other brands too we got some other engines actually in these boxes right here that we're going to test out and see what parts fits because they're the more affordable brands that they have uh, but they're a bunch of great people we've uh, enjoyed working with them these past like seven eight months and we're going to continue to do so so this buggy's going to be pretty sick we got to just get that engine mounted uh, before we can go any further we're also waiting on 1190 Comet CVT pulleys Comet sending those over um, and that's what we used on the Duro Max engine uh, they're the only thing that fits. This has a 1 and 7 eighths, 7 eighths or 7 sixteenths, one of the two, it's on screen, uh, crankshaft on it. 
so the comet 1190 is what's going to work so we're getting the drive and the driven so once we have it then we can mount the engine because we can't mount it until we get the uh, pulley so we know side to side placement of the engine the way this is going to work is we're going to figure out the belt length and the engine will bolt in one spot there'll be no sliding to it the engine so basically when you put this thing back together after powder coat everything just bolts in place you don't have to worry about tension anything and then we'll have manual chain tensioners on the chains to the jack shaft from the diff and then of course the trailing arms have a chain tensioner built inside of them so make sure to check out the links uh, we wanted to get more done in this video but we had to do so much work to the chassis uh, it took up a good portion of our time cutting that bar out cutting the floor pan out uh, but it's going to be a pretty sick chassis and if you're at our meetup that we're having next year in 2025 then you will see this here we'll be riding it and ripping it and hopefully have this 35 horse build up to like a 70 80 horse motor it's gonna be pretty sick so thank you guys for watching we love you and god bless